week on Houston Newsmakers, freshman congresswoman Lizzie Fletcher. What are the biggest challenges in her new role as representative of the 7th Congressional District? Impeachment, the border, disaster recovery, a lot is on her plate. We'll talk about it this morning. And from her district, which flipped from Republican to Democrat this last election, State Representative John Rosenthal, who also won as a Democrat in a district which has traditionally been Republican. What does it all mean? How did it impact this year's Texas legislative session on this week's Houston Newsmakers? From KPRC Channel 2, this is Houston Newsmakers with Cambrell Marshall. Good morning and welcome to Houston Newsmakers in a week when a lot has been happening during what is normally a slow period. Congresswoman Lizzie Fletcher is my special guest now through six months of her first term representing the 7th Congressional District. Good morning. How's it been going? Good morning, Cambrell. It's been going great. Yeah, busy, I bet. It's been busy. It's been an incredibly productive first six months in office. So when you went in, how have you adjusted and how did you determine what your priorities were going to be? Well, I am very fortunate that I put together a terrific team from the outset. I have a lot of Houstonians working in my office in Washington, and so that helps make sure that we understand our district's priorities and needs, and I've set my priorities based on the priorities of this district. Mm -hmm. So I asked to serve on two committees, the Transportation and Infrastructure Committee and on the Science, Space and Technology Committee. Mm -hmm. And on those committees, I work on things that really matter in our district. And so that's where I spend a lot of my time on, on the Science Committee. I sit on the Energy Subcommittee and I'm the chair of the Environment Subcommittee. Okay. And, um, and then on Transportation and Infrastructure, I'm working on things where we oversee FEMA, and the Army Corps of Engineers. I'm also on the Railroads and Pipelines Subcommittee. So a lot of issues that matter to our economy, to our safety, and to the issues that people are concerned about in the 7th Congressional District and across Greater Houston. And your district has traditionally been a Republican district. So when you win in that district, do you find that you need to be less progressive in order to make sure that your constituents are more, I, I don't, is that kind of why you won? Because you didn't come off as a hardcore far left progressive wacko? <laughs> well, I think I... I mean, you know what I mean. I mean, sometimes people will look at people and say far right crazy, far left crazy, you're in the middle. Well, and I think that's where the district is. And I do think that that's why I won. Because what we want is to have people representing us in Congress who are willing to listen to both sides, to work on both sides, to understand where people are coming from and to try to build consensus and actually move things forward. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I practiced law for a dozen years before I got this job. And as a lawyer, you learn to argue both sides and you understand that there are always at least two, if not more sides. And so I think that that is an important part of governing. And I think that it's what people in this district want to see. When I describe our district to people in Washington, I say, we don't think government is always the answer, but we don't think it's always the problem. Mm -hmm. What we want is government that is efficient, effective and ethical. And that is kind of the prison through which I set my priorities and that I look at the issues that come before me. And once you got there, I'm sure one of the most eagerly awaited moments, whether you wanted it to be or not, was the release of the Mueller report. That report um, on the um, investigation into Russian interference in the 2016 election, it was starkly different along party lines. Um, the president, of course, was claiming no collusion, no obstruction. Democrats said, hold on a minute. Uh, that's not exactly what the report said. What was your conclusion from that report, and how have you kind of evolved from the time that report has been released? Yeah, I think there are a couple of things, and you're right, there was um, a stark difference in the response, and I think people who've actually read the report have grave concerns. And the, the report's divided into two sections. One is the, the Russian election interference. And there's actually bipartisan agreement. Um, there was an interesting article a couple weeks ago, what do we need to do coming out of it? And even within the Texas delegation, there's bipartisan agreement that we need to secure our elections. And just this week in Congress, we passed the SAFE Act mm -hmm. to try to ensure election security of our voting systems and make sure that everyone is able to cast their ballot. Is that something that get through the Senate, or is that something that's still being blocked by Senator so. McConnell? Well, we just passed it this week. Um, I am very optimistic. It should pass the Senate. Mm -hmm. Every American should agree. And Robert Mueller said this in his very brief press conference. Every American should be concerned about the integrity of our elections. We don't need foreign governments interfering in our elections, and we need to do everything we can to secure them. This is the foundation of our country and our society, is that each of us gets a vote, and we have a say in the decisions that are made and the people who make them. So I think that that's a critical piece, and I do think there was a difference 
Um, it's not entirely partisan, but there is a difference in how people see the second half of the report outlining uh, potential obstruction of justice. Mm -hmm. and, and what the Mueller report said is that they did not make any determinations about that, and it's up to Congress to do it. And what I hear from my constituents overwhelmingly is that they want Congress to do its job okay. and to do investigating. Okay, now as you say that, it, it, in Congress now, anytime there's a subpoena issued or the information that tries to be obtained from the executive branch, you're being stonewalled. So Absolutely. what is your response to that, and how do you get around that? Well, it's incredibly frustrating to see this stonewalling, and I come at this as a Lawyer. Now, our entire system is predicated on voluntary compliance with the rule of law. It means that people who live in Houston who get a subpoena or a jury summons for that matter, people watching this morning know that they are required to comply with the legal process, whether or not they're involved and whether or not they think um, that, that it's relevant. Mm -hmm. People engage and, and we, we count on that. And so what we need to do is get the information and get to the truth. And I see the, the Mueller report as kind of the the brief mm -hmm. that you would have before a trial, but we need the evidence, we need to see the facts, we need to see the actual documents to make decisions and determinations and to prevent witnesses from coming, to prevent people from um, providing information and documents is deeply, deeply troubling. And it should, it should trouble everyone because we all do that and our system, civil and criminal justice system, depends on voluntary compliance. And nobody, nobody, even the president, is above the law. I know this is going to be a continuing uh, issue going forward and, and you will do what you think is most important. Right now, the immigration issue back on the front burner once again, and that is something that affects all of us in Texas, particularly uh, more so than it does other parts of the country. Um, now, most recently, the decision has been made to pass uh, legislation to give money to help take care of the children, and I mean that's that's the underlying reason given for all of that. What's your t sense on where things are going now, as far as immigration is concerned, and what kind of solutions there may be? Well, what is? That's a big question. No, no, it's here. okay. I mean, it it is a big question, but the truth is there are a lot of good answers out there, and a lot of people have been working on them for a long time. We need comprehensive immigration reform. There are so many issues that emerge in our incredibly complicated immigration system, and a lot of ideas have been floated out that people agree with or excited about that are bipartisan ideas. In 2013, there was the Gang of Eight bill that had wide bipartisan support, passed the Senate, couldn't get through the House. The House wouldn't take it up for years. Now what we see is a real different tone in the administration, but what we are doing in the House, we passed, and I was an original co-sponsor of the Dream and Promise Act, to provide legal status and a path to citizenship for dreamers, people who were born here, who were brought here as children um, and, and raised here, and this is the only home that they know, as well as TPS recipients, many of whom have been living in our community, especially in Houston, for many, many years. And I think it's really important that we that we focus on the places where we can make progress, but those are starts. There are many more issues, and, and we hear it from, there's a, a huge group that is willing to engage on this topic, and you see it especially in Houston. We're a city of immigrants. Mm -hmm. you know, we know that our city is continuing to grow with immigrants from around our country and around the rest of the world. And you know, we have one of the highest refugee resettlement populations in the world, and we see that as a benefit here. We also know that there are people living here who have family, who have a need for other you know, workers in their businesses to be able to come here, and we don't have a system that's working for those who are trying to operate within it. With the way the partisan divide is, and it's very distinct and really deep, what is the challenge? How optimistic can you be going forward that there will be something that will be decided? Because it does not look optimistic. Well, I am more optimistic um, than you might think. What I experience in Congress on a daily basis is actually a lot of bipartisan agreement. Mm -hmm. And for example, just this week, I introduced um, I introduced my first bill in the House a couple of months ago, and am now. Um, it just passed our committee on the Transportation and Infrastructure Committee. And it was a priority to me because it is a bill that helps state and local municipalities begin disaster mitigation and flood mitigation projects without some of the red tape um, that they've experienced. It's what the city of Houston and Harris County told me when I took office has been one of the biggest impediments for them in starting some of these mitigation projects. And on that point, let's stop for just a second. Okay. We're going to continue. We'll talk more about that in depth and detail yeah. coming up right after this. Glad to have Lizzie Fletcher here today. We're going to talk more about the bill 
bill that just passed. Uh, the hurdles cleared in getting that much needed hurricane relief money for our region. That's when Houston Newsmakers continues. Help to soothe sunburn, the food to add to your bath, one thing to skip in the shower, and what to sleep on. Plus, how and where to buy your pet's food to save the most money, Monday morning on KPRC Channel 2 News Today. Get excited, Whataburger fans. Our one-of-a-kind mushroom Swiss burger is back. And now it's an all-time favorite. If you love mushrooms, you're going to love this burger. The double cheese and mushroom was absolutely amazing. It's a really good balance between the mushrooms and the Swiss. And that au jus sauce on top. The creamy au jus sauce. It really complements the mushrooms. Everything just works perfectly together. It's just perfect. Every bite's perfect. It's not just a mushroom and Swiss burger. It's a Whataburger mushroom Swiss burger. Our story starts here, where the rubber meets the road. Where Metro invests $3.2 billion for roads, bike lanes, sidewalks, and more throughout the Houston region. Metro is your award-winning transportation company for outstanding service and spending taxpayer money wisely. We're providing innovative solutions to improve daily travel and to keep our region moving. Let's go! Texas, there's a spirit of independence that moves us, inspires us, but you've got to catch it while it lasts. I love the American road. The final days of the Great American Sales Event at your Texas Ford dealer with limited time savings on America's best-selling trucks. Like Ford F-150, now get 0% financing for 72 months plus $750 appreciation cash. The final days of the Great American Sales Event. Hurry in to your best in Texas Ford dealer. They can be dangerous. They're an eyesore, and they're taking over some of your neighborhood. So we've contacted the city uh, too many times to count. We just tired of this already. Know your rights when it comes to fixing your street. Monday night at 10. Well, to many of us, it may not seem like it, but it's been almost two years since Hurricane Harvey hammered the Houston region. It's taken about that long to secure what many think is a proper amount of funding to help this community become whole again. We've gotten some, but uh, some more certainly is needed in some areas. As a member of the Committee on Transportation and Infrastructure, you were part of the unanimous bipartisan vote to come out of the committee about getting disaster funding. Talk about what that means. Uh, in, it, it looks good on paper. What does it mean in actuality? Sure. So there are a couple of things. Um, we have been fighting to get the funds for Houston and Texas and those recovering from Hurricane Harvey that Congress appropriated that are tied up in red tape in the administration. They're, it's tied up in um, the HUD department, and we have been pushing in a bipartisan way. Our delegation has been working, but I really have taken it on to lead the charge on that because that is a priority for my constituents. Mm -hmm. There are people who are still afraid that it's going to rain, just like it did two years ago, and they don't see that anything has changed. Mm -hmm. And we have got to address that problem. So we're continuing to fight for our money. And then my bill, the HELP bill, uh, which passed out of our Transportation Infrastructure Committee, will also help loosen the, the ability for cities to have access to money to start projects sooner without jeopardizing their ability to get federal funding. And what I'm so proud of about that is that not only did I have Republican co-sponsors who helped me introduce the legislation, but when we voted on it in committee, there was wide support across the country and among mm -hmm. both parties. It passed unanimously out of my committee. And I see that in Congress again. It's not what you see on TV a lot of times, but in both of my committees, we're passing a lot of legislation out of committee on a bipartisan and often unanimous basis. We were talking before we start taping about the fact that six months in, you're basically 25% into your term as you got a lot of stuff you're doing and a lot of stuff you're trying to get done but also in the meantime there are people out there who say well we don't like the fact that our district was flipped and so there are people starting to get together to run against you how much attention do you pay to that you know what's going on is it a slight buzz in the background how, how does that impact anything that you're doing well of course I know that there are people who want this job and I understand why this job is an incredible opportunity to be of service to this community and it's an incredible privilege so I'm not surprised that other people want it I'm really focused on doing the best job I can with mm -hmm. the time that I have and hopefully um, by next November people will be convinced and understand that I'm the best person for this job and that 
I'm committed to this city and this community and our values and making sure that they're reflected in Washington and that we have a real influence in Washington. And that's what I've been working on, really engaging, especially amongst the caucus, but with the entire Congress on issues that matter in this community, talking about what our energy future looks like. There's a lot of talk about energy and what the future is going to be in Washington, and I think that we in the energy capital of the world need to be leading and driving that conversation. And so I've really worked um, to engage on that. I'm the co-chair of the Natural Gas Caucus. Um, I've also been working on trade issues, which is critically important in Houston, and I'm a member of the New Democrat Coalition, uh, which is a centrist group within the Democratic Party, and there I co-chair the Trade Task Force. So really working on issues that matter to Houston. Staying busy. Well, that's good. It keeps you out of trouble. Okay, so la the, the Supreme Court, um, and by the way, we're going to do Newsmakers Extra because we just got, we just, <laughs> we have a lot to talk about. Newsmakers Extra is going to be a part of this as well. So you can go to click to and get more information there. Right. A Supreme Court said, you know what, um, you can't put that census question. You can't ask about your citizenship on the, on the census. What your thoughts about that? I think the Democrats were typically in agreement that that's something that should not have happened. Yeah, I think that's absolutely the right thing to happen. It is in the Constitution that we have a census and the census drives so much of what we do and Texas really stands to lose with that question with people not fully engaging with the census takers because we've had so many people moving to Texas and so much is apportioned out of the results of the census so we stand to gain more members of Congress who will be able to bring Texas's voice to the Congress we stand to gain the estimates are two to three seats in the Congress and all sorts of financial decisions are made and allocated based on our population. So it's critical that we have an accurate count across the country. And anything that discourages people from participating, which this question appears not only to have the effect of doing, but to be designed to do, is deeply problematic. We've got more to talk about. I want to talk about Supreme Court on gerrymandering. Not such a good decision from your standpoint, at least Democrats' standpoint. And much more. The uh, Iran is now in the news as well. The president is is talking about some things there and uh, much more. We're going to do that coming up on Newsmakers Extra. Congresswoman Lizzie Fletcher, thank you for being here this morning. Thank you so Good much luck as you continue to work on behalf of your constituents. Thank you. Coming up, the Texas legislative session just ended a few weeks ago. I'll talk about what was accomplished through the eyes of a freshman legislator who, like Lizzie Fletcher, flipped the district he was representing. Part of a trend or an aberration? Next, when Houston Newsmakers continues. In Texas, there's a spirit that moves us, a freedom that inspires us, but you've got to catch it while it lasts. I love the American road. The final days of the Great American Sales Event at your Texas Ford dealer, with limited time savings on America's best-selling brand. Just announced, get zero for 72 plus 1,000 cash and no charge powertrain care on Mustang, plus 750 appreciation cash. The final days of the Great American Sales Event. Hurry in to your best in Texas Ford dealer. Hungry for the best treats and eats in Texas? Come into DQ for our limited time deal. $3 Hunger Busters. And treat yourself with a delicious blizzard treat in your favorite flavor. DQ. That's what I like about Texas. Wish we could afford to buy new furniture. What is this? It's your breakthrough from Cons Home Plus. Cons Low Payment Finder finds the lowest payment tailored to you. Good credit or building credit. Wow. This is Matt and Rachel, and this is the few minutes they have until nap time is over. This is Rachel depositing a check without leaving the house. Have you seen my debit card? This is Rachel turning off her debit card. And back on again. <coughs> this is your right here, right now bag. This is Wells Fargo. The 2019 Cadillacs are made for summer and made to move. Get this low mileage lease on this 2019 Cadillac XT5 from around $399 per month. Visit your Houston area Cadillac dealer today. And welcome back to Houston Newsmakers. I'm joined by State Representative from the 135th District, John Rosenthal. Good morning to you. Good morning. I find it interesting that you like uh, uh, Congresswoman Fletcher, who we had on here, who upset 
a Republican to win her seat. You did the same thing in the state district. That's right. What That's was the exactly challenge right. with that? How did that come about? It's a shift in the demographics in our part of the city. Uh -huh. So if you, if you know where my district is, I'm a constituent area of Congressional District 7. Okay. So the same dynamic that worked for Lizzie is the same dynamic that worked for me. So we're talking Jersey Village, Cypress. Jersey Village, Copperfield, Cypress, a little bit of Katy down in the corner. Uh, but it's all centered around the intersection of 290 and 1960. Okay. So your first legislative session, you've said, you know, you're not a normal politician and you kind of like the fact, you said, I'm not, you know, I'm not politics as usual. How did that work for you in this first legislative uh, session? Actually, I think it helped me be much more effective. So I'm a mechanical engineer by trade mm -hmm. and that gives me a little different perspective. There are no other mechanical engineers in the entire state legislature. So I'm that guy that brings spreadsheets to arguments. And uh, I like to think that I present based on facts and data. And, uh, and that was what I ran on. So as you got involved and you were getting involved with the legislative session, what were the major accomplishments that you think by you specifically and by the legislature that uh, we need to be paying attention to? Well, the whole tenor of the election was around public education and public education finance reform. So I like to think that my election is part of what drove that. We, you know, there were a number of seats that changed hands, and I think the people of the state spoke. And so House Bill 3, the public education finance reform, I was happy to co-author that. Um, it's a huge step in the right direction. And then if I was going to mention another one, it would be the uh, disaster planning, the Hurricane Harvey relief and disaster planning. I talked a lot about uh, planning commission that's statewide. People are going to see that as a constitutional amendment on their ballot this next election. And what will that effectively do? It's going to create a planning commission that helps coordinate regionally and statewide disaster relief planning and also provides assistance to counties and political subdivision in applying for the federal dollar so that we can get the assistance that's already been designated. So in essence, it would, it would speed up the process Absolutely. theoretically about when we need it to a certain area, it will help. Exactly that. right. Well, what should all of us know about how we should interact with you? Because once, once a legislative session starts, a lot of times it's like, okay, goodbye. And then we don't really hear an awful lot. We hear a little bit about how the sausage is being made. Uh -huh. But what would you suggest to all of us to be better involved and better in, 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 uh, informed about what's going on in the legislative session? Not only when you're in session, but now that you're out of session, because you still have stuff that's going on. There's a lot of stuff going on. And if I feel like it's our job as representatives to be present in our communities, to listen to our people, uh, to be accessible, to be available. And so that's what people need to do. You can contact us through our district offices. Um, I am perfectly happy, more than overjoyed, to set appointments with my constituents. People come in, talk about their issues of concern, talk about their neighborhoods. You know, it's my job to listen to them. And so just by showing up, calling your representatives, I think that that goes a long way. And then you can monitor our work on the websites and pages. So this session over, what's left now for you going forward? You got some things done. What did you leave undone that you really wanted to get done that you're now focusing on to get done next time? I have a couple of things, but um, so for me, my whole campaign, the whole reason that I ran was centered around public education, and I would like to change the way that we do our standardized testing in Texas and really in the nation. I feel like the nation follows Texas. We're a leader here, and if, if we can get our standardized testing to be more helpful to students instead of, I consider it a damaging system now. The STAR testing that we do is hugely unpopular for very good reasons and to get that unpacked so that we um, can replace it with something that works better for everybody. Mm -hmm. Going forward, people who might want to get involved in that, just call your office? Absolutely. Call my office, uh, get involved. We are, um, my, me and my team uh, have a number of engagement events that happen all the time in the district. You know, go to my website, check it out. It's johnrosenthaltx.com. People uh, might be surprised at how much actually gets done out of session, wouldn't they? They would. And 
it's funny that people ask me all the time, well, the session's over, what do you do for a year and a half? <laughs> and um, there's a lot of stuff that goes on. What we call the interim is the time between the sessions. Right. And uh, we're on, I'm on county affairs, so we're gonna be doing some investigations in county affairs related around the Sandra Bland uh, act that failed. And um, I know that our chairman is interested in, in investigating how county jails are run. We'll keep you updated. We'll keep focusing on you, seeing what you're doing, and the folks can, what's that website again? JohnRosenthalTX.com. You could say it much better than I. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you, Appreciate Cameron. it. Appreciate Congratulations it. on this first term. Thank Good luck you. going forward. Final thoughts and what's ahead on Houston Newsmakers just ahead. Get ready to sip into summer at Taco Cabana. When you purchase a 20-ounce drink during July, you'll have one in four chances to win any number of great prizes. You could win your favorite TC food item instantly or receive a code to enter online for other awesome prizes, including one of five trips to Mexico. And while you sip, sample two new Carnitas Street Tacos, Yucatan and Mexico City for a limited time. So come cool off, peel off, and sip into summer only at Taco Cabana. Hey, Alex, I think we got a contract you're gonna like. Okay, okay. This is the deal I was looking for. No fine print, a great low rate. What do you think? Can you throw in four free tickets to an Astros game and a $50 Visa gift card? For snacks? Okay. Okay. Okay? We got a deal! Sign up for the Baseball Fan Plan from Champion Energy today. You'll get a low fixed rate with no fine print and four free tickets to see the Astros. Plus, you'll get a $50 Visa gift card to spend on whatever you want. This might be the best contract I signed all season. How are your home like a champion? Visit www.champion.energy slash Astros today. Explore Texas with us as we learn about these animals and many more who need our help. From toads to turtles, birds to bears, join our anchors and their kids. I have a question. As they help the Houston Zoo reveal how you can make a big difference when it comes to saving wildlife around the world. Take action. And watch Wednesday at 7. Across the street and around the world, KPRC is Houston's home for news. Watch NBC Nightly News at 530 on KPRC Channel 2. In the coming weeks here on Houston Newsmakers, as the Houston mayor's race gets ready to heat up, we'll be talking with some of the candidates you are not hearing much about, but they are still very serious about their efforts to win the city's top spot. We'll do our part also in the celebration of the 50th anniversary of Apollo 11's moon landing and the impact it's had on NASA through the years and much more. My thanks to Congresswoman Fletcher and to State Rep Rosenthal for joining me this morning. Remember, if you'd like to see previous shows or get information on today's program, go to clicktohouston.com and under the news banner, click on Newsmakers. Have a great day, everybody. I look forward to seeing you back here again next week.